Hello. This is, this is Barry. Barry. I'm going to show uh, uh, with you the, the current, current status of MTSP swap out and the swap in. And, and uh, I'm also going to show some interesting user case after we uh, enable MTSP swap out and swap in. Uh, so well, basically, basically, I start from a uh, uh, TSB swap out, which actually creates under Kyrie. I've already, already introduced the in, in the previous, previous session. session. So, so basically, at the beginning, only PM PMD map to TSB uh, swap out uh, could be swap out to without splitting. Then Ryan extends to MTSP. Uh, but uh, then, then we, we, we reported report the uh, fragmentation issue because, because in Ryan's case, case said we, we have to get an empty swap cluster even for a uh, MTHP whose size is much, ma much smaller than cluster. So, so basically, if a cluster uh, is not empty, you can't get it for MTHP swap pod, even you have a lot of free swap slots in the cluster. So in Kyrie and the uh, crash approach, we can actually use non-empty cluster for MTHP swap, swap pod. So basically after apply, uh, Harry and the crash test set, we, we find the situation has improved quite a lot. But uh, eventually, for example, on a real phone, you win eventually after we after the phone has, has been running for a couple of hours, we still unlikely to get continuous swap slots for MTSP to swap out. So, so, so but the, the situation, situation has improved quite a lot. Uh, with creation of the Kyrie's patch set, we can actually absolutely work around the fragmentation issue by, for example, two JRAMs. One JRAM dedicated for small folio and the, the other one dedicated for large folio. This approach can, for example, make a small, a small folio quarantine in one zero, and then the small, the small folio won't won spread in a, a lot of zero. So, so that folio can, can always swap out, out successfully. successfully. But uh, I'm not, a, yeah, yeah, so, so that's, that's what uh, we are using uh, uh, for work around the, 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 the depth fragmentation issue. issue. Maybe, Maybe, and the uh, Chris has. You introduce some, some uh, other, other approach, approach in, in, in his, his session, session just, just a, a minute ago. And, uh, and, then, and then for TSP swap in, it's, it's quite, quite important, important to, to, uh, to, to, to to products like uh, Android, Android phone, phone because, because in, 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 in a phone, phone, more than, for example, 64, 60, 60% of a lollimus memory can could be in swap. So right now, do swap page, for example, do swap page only support a small folio swapping. So once a large folio is swapped out, we lose it forever. So somehow we have to like get the large folio back in do swap page. So yeah, like Changhua like and me have been working on this, especially on synchronous I/O devices, and uh, we have got some patch and match previously in 6.11. For example, if we find a large folio in swap case, then do swap page will map the large folio found in swap case as a whole, and. Uh, and uh, recently, we have been also working on allocating and mapping MTSP in Dushua page, uh, but for synchronous I/O devices because we are uh, Android, Android engineers. We 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 have only the environment to do the test on 
uh, Android phone, and um, the and the Android phone is probably a quite common use case because we have millions and millions of phone uh, in the market. So, but, uh, yeah, all the MTHP swap clean uh, depends on C swap is never enabled because C swap can't handle MTHP. Once C, uh, C swap has ever enabled, might a part of yeah a part of MTHP might be in C swap and the, some other parts is in the backend swap devices. So we can't MTHP swapping can't coexist with C swap. So this is probably the problem we need to fix uh, in the J swap team. And nothing. Oh, so after we enable MTHP swap on swap in, we have actually developed uh, some interesting user case. Yeah, so, yeah, for example, by us or by Intel. Yeah. We actually observed a uh, interesting phenomenon. For example, if if we if we do compression and the decompression using larger size, we can actually improve the compression ratio and also significantly reduce CPU consumption to do compressing the decompression. For example, sometimes we saved 70% of CPU for like a compression, decompression things. So that's why Tan Quan, Tan Quan Zhen from our post team uh, has contributed a patch set which can make like this as malloc and Z run to compress large objects and uh, save large objects directly. For example, for a uh, 64 kilobytes large folio, this folio can be compressed uh, all together as one object. And uh, the object can be saved in this malloc directly. But for, for example, for a uh, MTHP whose order is five, then this Folio might be saved as two JS Mal uh, objects. So we have we don't have hardware engine to do compression and uh, decompression. That's what we observed by using CPU to do compression and decompression. And uh, using in Intel IAA hardware engine, NJ Glover contributed a patch set which can, for example, utilize the multiple hardware threads to compress and decompress. And then they have observed uh, like the CRAM write latency can improve 10 times and the CRAM rate latency can improve by seven times. So it's an uh, amazing user case, yeah. And uh, yeah, as as I mentioned earlier, like MTSP swapping can't coexist with C swap. But now we are seeing Kanchala from Inter is working on bring bring up C swap swap out for MTSP uh, for MTSP, and uh, his approach is iterating each sub page. In a large folio and the like compression, the store is server page one by one in JS, uh, this what they put. So actually, I wonder if it's possible also for this swap to do the same thing as we have, we are doing in Z run. For example, if this swap can also save large objects, but not iterating each page. It might be 
better on performance, better. Yeah, maybe the first step we 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 can start from iterating to each page one by one. But uh, yeah, on, on on the other hand, I I I haven't seen anybody working on MTHP swapping support in G uh G G swap. So likely we have to resolve this problem if we want to support both yeah, this SML J swap and the uh, MTHP swap swapping uh, together in the same system. So yeah, finally I have some open uh, questions. Like uh, yeah, as as I mentioned earlier, we we are we only support synchronous I/O devices. So after we move to uh, like long synchronous I/O devices, what's the prop size for MTHP swapping might become a crucial question to answer. For example, if we if if we swap in in a too large size, maybe we are going to do extra and unnecessary. I/O, it, it can cause a huge read latency. So, so we have already a lot of discussion in the mail list. For example, uh, some people proposal the uh, adding per sub page read ahead flag. For example, for each sub page, we have a read flag, read ahead flag. And uh, we can use read ahead flag to determine the swapping size or even determine if we are going to do MTHP swapping. And uh, we have already tried to add a swapping enabled lab, which was obviously disliked by, uh, like, yeah, really, and uh, Christopher. And uh, recently, I'm considering if we can reuse the existing read ahead lab like uh, page class for 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 swapping read ahead we have already an existing page cluster which can define the maximum size for swapping so maybe we can combine page cluster and uh, the mtsp enabled the csfs control together to set the maximum size for MTHP swapping. I'm not sure if you guys would like it. And uh, some other consideration is yeah, from like uh, Ryan's patch set, maybe we, we need to consider the hardware architecture, architecture for example. example um, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm Do we have the MGLR you speaker? Yes, yes I'm, I'm here. here. You presenter, so you can talk. Excellent, Excellent. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, so yeah, I'm Axel from, from Google. Um, presenting on just some updates around MGLRU and uh, also, you know, I don't have 15 minutes of content. I'm hoping to collect feedback, the group's interest in this topic, right? Um, so for anybody who hasn't been paying attention to this area, uh, I'll briefly describe what MGLRU is. It's an alternative to the classic active and inactive LRUs. The basic idea is to split the lists up into multi-tier, multi-generational LRUs, um, roughly ordered by access recency. So each of these generations, which is a list of pages or folios these days, uh, has a birth time stamp, which allows recency comparison across uh, LRUs. So you can compare age uh, from a file on a non-LRU, for example. Uh, 
uh, one of its key selling points is to optimize aging and generation updates uh, by efficiently scanning, forward scanning the page tables. So it's very cache friendly. Uh, and another big idea it has is to simplify reclaim between a non file or use using a refault eviction based PID controller. So in terms of the current status of Edge RU, it was merged in 6.1, um, so almost two years ago now. Various major distros enable this by default, so Debian, Fedora, and Ubuntu. Uh, and within Google, you know, we've adopted this by default in Android and Chrome OS as well. Uh, so one of the things I've been working on a lot lately is adopting this in the Google production fleet. So historically, Google ran this thing called KSTLD for time-based proactive aging and reclaim. The idea is it scans memory periodically. It keeps track of which pages have been accessed. Uh, it scans in physical page order with RMAP lookups, so it's very cache unfriendly. Uh, so kind of as a first step to transitioning to MGLRU, we added a small wrapper around it so it can sort of emulate some of the KSTLD interfaces. Um, we extended it to allow periodic aging. So normally MGLRU will only do aging and look at the access bit um, when it needs to, sort of an eviction time, for example. We changed it so you can say on a fixed interval every every couple of minutes, go ahead and scan and create a new generation. And then we extended it so you can say, reclaim everything older than a certain time. Uh, so this kind of shim around MGLRU is running in Google production today, at least a fraction of it. Uh, and so far the results have been great. We got the same memory savings we were getting with KSTLD with vastly less CPU overhead, like 5x less CPU overhead. Um, one of the other things we've been working on is extending it with uh, to scan KDM's MMU secondary page tables. So we can do working set reporting and proactive reclaim for VMs as well. Uh, one of the important things this series also does is it makes the scan lockless. So this drastically reduces KDM MMU lock latency or lock contention. Uh, so I have a link here to the patch series. This is James Hewton's work uh, on the mailing list. And then the lock contention benchmark, that was something Yu Zhao posted in an earlier version. Um, so kind of one of the things I want to do in this in this talk is just collect what are some of the lingering problems or use cases that are not addressed that are sort of blockers for adopting MGLRU in more places. Um, there are a couple things we know about. There's been some discussion on the mailing list where you can get um killed too early if write back falls behind. For example, if you're in a memory constrained C group and you're writing to a slow IO device. Um, so there's a fix posted upstream for this. Basically, the idea is when we go to scan and we find all the pages are dirty, we wake up the flushers. Um, I think this does fix the issue at hand, but there's some lingering areas of improvement that could be done here. Um, one is just smarter decisions about when to wake up. Another is smarter throttling or also just deciding who's in charge of throttling right back, right? I've heard some people say, well, the, the person doing the wake ups should be the one to not wake up and throttle in that sense, or there's the C group level right back throttling we have as well. Um, kind of another constraint is today MGLRU has these dependencies in K config, so you can only enable it on 64 bit systems, for example. Um, the basic problem here is lack of page flags. MGLRU needs at least three bits. So a proposal here to free up some bits to enable it even on 32 bit is to put some of the bits in the LRU pointer low bits. Um, we think page active and page unevictable are great candidates for that and possibly, possibly page, page swap, swap back. Um, and then, yeah, yeah I'm interested, interested to hear any problems the audience has. has. Uh, uh, kind of, of so, so problems, problems or bugs, bugs is one, one side of it, but the other side of it is just supporting different use cases. cases. Um, so, so one, one big, big use case, case MGLRU, as it sits in the upstream kernel today, doesn't uh, kind of address is proactive reclaim and aging like I was talking about. So the sort of case still the emulation thing I mentioned isn't really the best interface. It's not maybe what upstream <laughs> would like. Really, the purpose of it is to is to match Google's existing stuff. 
But we have uh, Yuan Chu has been working on this series upstream, which we think is a much better interface for this, um, his working set reporting series. So this does some similar things, right? It it generalizes the active and active counts to arbitrary time intervals, so you can you can for a given amount of coldness time reclaim those pages. Um, it gives you per C group per NUMA node and then per type of memory working set information. Um, and he's working also on benchmarks that kind of show the usefulness with concrete data, and then also interested in ballooning for VMs. That's another area where we think proactive reclaim could be pretty useful. Um, another idea is just the MGLRU and the reclaim path generally is full of a lot of heuristics. Uh, these heuristics may not be perfect for all workloads or all use cases. So there's an idea that perhaps some of this can be implemented in BPF. That way you can customize it if you have a workload or use case that's not you know, properly addressed by MGLRU out of the box. Um, we think that kind of an extension would be especially useful for other hyperscalers besides Google to adopt MDLRU, since they have pretty may have pretty particular requirements. Um, so yeah, for the last seven minutes we've got, I was hoping for some discussion. If anybody has any questions or you have problems with MDLRU, let me know. Um, yeah, I don't know if you caught the talk earlier, but there was a talk um, by the author of Damon, and I see some overlap here, like specifically around things like proactive reclaim and working set size reporting. I'm keen to know what are the similarities and differences, and if somebody wants to get working set size information, which tool should they use and why? Yeah, and maybe, SJ, you can also comment on this. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah so, so when, when, when we, we were, were doing, doing this, we did evaluate both multi-gen LRU and Daemon uh, kind of to see which one would be a better solution for us. Um, I think in the end, we went with MGLRU just because it, it matched better our existing way of doing things. Um, I think I think also uh, Wei is on the call here, and he did the evaluation. He could probably provide a lot more detail. Sorry to throw him under the bus. Um, or Shanjay, if you have comments about that. So uh, uh, this is Wei. Uh, so I think at that time when we did the evaluation, uh, one of the main uh, features we were looking at, uh, which is supported uh, much better by multi-gen, is that uh, we are doing the system-wide monitoring. So because we are interested in, uh, say, swap out cold memory to save memory cost from a system perspective. But I, I think uh, at that point, uh, demo is large, a lot more focused on Process process level view of, uh, of of page heart and the code information, basically uh, uh, that's basically a much f um, different uh, granularity which we don't deal with at that time. Uh, so uh, another thing is that uh, uh, for us is that uh, because multi gen uh, as a new uh, LRU replacement, uh, we we we're going to deploy that uh, in in a fleet. Uh, so that the getting the working set information now become like uh, just additional interface uh, wrapped around that so that we don't have to do like a page table scanning uh, like in two different kind of contexts. There's also like uh, uh, some kind of, in, uh, I mean, interaction problems there. So I think probably still need to be sorted out. So basically the cost perspective, that's another angle uh, can, can be considered. The third angle here is that uh, uh, the multi-gen, uh, the working set information actually is uh, integrated well with LRU itself. Basically, if we want to, if we want to leverage the working set information to do the reclaim, uh, we the, the page uh, reclaim actually will be consistent with what we see from working set reporting. But with demo, I think all of this structure uh, managed uh, separately. I think uh, there's a 
I think lower level de integration uh, for, for our use cases. Uh, I, I think uh, that that kind of at least uh, I share my uh, what are we we are thinking and uh, I think people we have different opinions on, on this matter. I would like to hear. I mean, the the uh, people thought as well. Sorry, I didn't catch the question. For some reason, the audio from the room wasn't coming through for me. I didn't catch it. Ah, there we there go. We go. Yeah, do you have any roadmap for MGLRU to replace the traditional LRU so we don't have two different LRU implementations? Um, yeah, yeah I, I, I don't know about a concrete, concrete roadmap. roadmap. Um, I, th I, th I think basically, basically getting rid of the active inactive LRU requires, requires figuring out everybody, everybody who isn't supported, supported by MGLRU and, and fixing all of those issues. issues. Um, I think an easier lift is probably setting it as the default of K-config. I mean, because of course, course folks can always change that if they, they if they see fit, but that, that might, might help at least move some users over who just, just like there may be a subset of users who just have not been paying attention and don't have a strong feeling, right? right. So, so maybe, maybe setting the default, default can help with that. But yeah, that's that's kind of my goal here. I think the first step is to identify all of the gaps, so then we can work on fixing them. I think, I think basically, basically just, just to uh, kind of add on or repeat what I uh, actually just mentioned, there's, there's, there's a known problem slide, and then the, the second bullet point of this new use case of slide, I think uh, it probably will be required uh, for us to reach uh, that state, basically, to have only one uh, at least the kernel implementation. Yeah, I mean, if there's anybody else who, you know, inside your organization or, or your distro that you work on or anything like that, if you haven't adopted MJU, I'd be curious to know why, like what's missing? What can we do to support your use case properly? Um, but yeah. 